I would say it's time for a flex shootout. And it's not just uh, any flex shootout, it is a modern flex shootout. And I had to make some choices as I was preparing pens to do so. But I thought this would be interesting, especially because two companies have um, recently kind of, they, they dove into the flex market. Uh, Franklin Christoph with uh, their um, 14 karat flex nibs and also Aurora with their uh, I think what they call vintage flex nibs and I, I have done separate reviews of this but I thought w what would be interesting to a lot of people uh, might be to see these different pens how they perform side by side and there was a lot of choices I, I had to make uh, uh, if you're talking of modern flex will you include for example uh, a Visconti palladium nib I chose not to do that and the reason is that uh, the palladium nibs I've used some of them are super stiff some of them are very flexible and uh, I don't think there's enough consistency there to really call them flex nibs if, if anything they're semi-flex to begin with uh, but they're also not really advertised as flex nibs, they're just advertised as sometimes as softer nibs, hence Dream Touch. Another brand I could have included is Omas with the extra flexible nibs. The only problem is my experience with those hasn't been too great. I, I had one and I flexed it once and it sprang. And I've heard from other people that that happened too. And furthermore, Omas is not really in business anymore. I know there is a, a revamped uh, version uh, and they've been resuscitated, but it's not really Omas as it was. So to keep things simple, Three pens. Franklin Christoph Model 66 in ancient glass, the Aurora 88, their um, special anniversary edition with their 14K flex nib, and the um, uh, Pilot slash Namiki Falcon. This is actually labeled Pilot, so I'm going to say Pilot Falcon, and this is the metal bodied version. There's also a resin version, which is, I think, about $100 uh, cheaper. Three 14 karat nibs, three flex nibs. Now, I'm not going to talk about these pens because, as I said, I have reviewed these separately. I just want to talk about the uh, the nibs here. And I'm going to show you the nibs side by side. I have to go through a little bit of trouble to make these... Uh, be able to put them down in such a way that you can see them, but I'll show you a close-up anyway. So give me one second here. Because, as you may be able to see, as you can see, for sure, what we're talking about here is three very different nibs. I'll try to zoom in a bit so you can see that a bit better. Should do that the other way around, shouldn't I? Yeah. Okay. Um, you see that the shapes of these three nibs are pretty different. Let's start with the Aurora. What Aurora has done is create a nib with very long, thin tines, and that creates flex. Right? If they're very long and very thin, they can easily spread open more easily than if they would be uh, a lot less than so you know that kind of makes sense to me 14 karat nib solid gold nib and also a monochrome nib so it's a single tone monotone nib Franklin Christoph and I expect this is a Jovo nib I have uh, seen other people uh, other other manufacturers offer these two now so I'm, I'm expecting it's a it's a Jovo nib but uh, do correct me if I'm wrong um, you see, this is a, a very different approach. This is a nib that has cutouts, and um, um, I think Pendleton Brown called this kind of stuff angel wings. It was not exactly the same thing, but he did a, a modification, kind of with the same principle. You just cut out a hole, and that hole allows the nib to flex open under pressure, because you simply make that possible by having the nib not be connected in every place. Uh, that works too. Finally, uh, Pilot uh, slash Namiki, the, the Namiki is the fancy version of Pilots, and they chose a, a very interesting nib uh, design, which I, it doesn't really look like a traditional nib at all, but it, I think it, it works in the same principle, namely thin tine. So it's kind of a similar thing as with that Aurora nib. It's a similar principle, just a longer, thinner tine, and the whole shape of the nib is, is, is interesting. So, which pen is best? Well, for that purpose, of course, we're doing the shootout, so you can have a look and, and see them side by side. I want to zoom out as much as possible, so I can give you as much um, field of view as possible. Let's start out with the Aurora. 
So we have the Aurora 88. There's not the same ink in the three pens, sorry. This is just what was in the pens. Um, bear with me. Under no pressure whatsoever, you have a good fine. And there is a lot of feedback, as you typically get from um, uh, Aurora. But you see, you can do some normal writing, no issues. It's not a nib that, that spreads open very easily. Uh, it's a relatively wet nib. The ink is... Um, um, Sail Gentle Apricot, doesn't really matter, it's not an ink review, uh, it's just what I had in the pen. Um, and you can definitely squeeze out some line variation. The feed is not primed, I just opened the cap and I just started writing. I have found uh, that this pen can start a railroad. Um, and I think one of the... there we go, pushing it a bit there. One of the biggest issues with the pen is that it's definitely not vintage flex. They call it a vintage flex. It's it's not vintage flex. A vintage 14k nib flexes a lot more than this. Also doesn't railroad as quickly and I think that's the most important part. Snaps back faster. So if you were to do that, pressure, no pressure, pressure, no pressure with a vintage nib, you would end up with something like that, then a thin line, then a thick line again. And that snapping back, the Aurora just isn't doing very well. Now, I think what is the most prohibitive thing about this pen, slash nib, is the price tag. They go for 620 euros. Yes, you do get a piston filler, yes, you do get a springy nib, but I, I wouldn't call this vintage flex, and I, I'm not sure if this is the, the best option out there right now. Um, but it's nice, it's a collector's piece and all that. Now we have the Franklin Christoph. This is... Uh, So this happens to be a Model 66, but you can get this nib on, on more uh, uh, pens. You can also buy it separately from Franklin Kristoff. And the ink is Iro Shizuko Ama Iro. This nib I find wetter than the Aurora nib. I'll do some normal writing too. You can get this nib uh, just as a stock round nib nib option from Franklin Christoph and you can also get it in what they call the stub italic gradient which I have done a, a um, review of as well in my my regular uh, Franklin Christoph flex nib video I, I show off that nib and, and tell you what the advantages of that is it does maximize line variation um, but I thought as the other two nibs here are round nibs I would I would pick this for this comparison um, I think you get slightly less line variation as in the Aurora, maybe, although the difference is marginal, but I mean, I'm really squeezing this pretty hard and I think that's what you get. Now, the biggest issue with this nib, um, it writes, it definitely gives you some nice line variation. I mean, let's be fair, uh, there is there's definitely line variation going on from no pressure to pressure. Um, the biggest issue is this. I was pushing it pretty hard here, and uh, you can see what happens there. Uh, you get a, um, a gap between the nib and the feed. Very easy to fix. Just push it down on the paper like that, very lightly. Don't push it too hard. Just, just give it a, a gentle push. And as you can see, that gap sets itself again. So no, not really a big deal. The problem is more so that when you are really flexing this to the max, uh, you are going to run into that. And this happens with both this nib and the stub metallic gradient that I have. Uh, you need to push it back into place because once that gap happens, ink flow is hampered and uh, you're not gonna write anymore. Now, as to that snap back action, you see here too, you simply don't get that, that vintage uh, snap back. Now, the advantage of this is you can buy this nib separately for $150. And, and that's um, really not that bad, I think. That's just the nib, that's no pen. You can buy it on the Model 2, for example. I think it's 265 and then 275 for a stub metallic gradient flex. Uh, so that's pretty much nib meistered in house by Franklin Christoph. But clearly, uh, the difference here is uh, fairly remarkable. So it's definitely an interesting option if you want to play with some line variation, you want to have fun and you, you don't want to spend too much, especially given that it's a number six nib, so this will fit a number of other pens uh, fairly easily. Uh, and that's, that's kind of a nice option to, to have, I think.
Okay, then finally, there is the Pilot Namiki Falcon. As I said, in this case, the metal version, but... Um, this is also an Iro Shizuku ink. As you can see, this is a very fine nib. It is a Japanese nib, and as I have said before, Japanese nibs typically are a grade smaller than their Western counterparts, so this fine is leaning towards a Western extra fine. It's a pretty dark ink, so I don't know how well you see that, but it's definitely very fine. It's also feedbacky. And when it comes to smoothness, the Franklin Christoph I find the smoothest of these three. So if that's what you're looking for, uh, then uh, that's probably what you should pick. It is also a nice wet nib, which is interesting for such a um, uh, such a fine nib. Uh, and although that is feedback, it's it's I don't find this particularly unpleasant. I find the Aurora to be the most feedbacky of these three nibs, even though this nib is a bit finer. Interesting. Now, what you want to see the flex. So let's increase, and it keeps going and going and going. Um, oh try to do that here too. In my mind this pen gives the biggest amount of line variation. It's, I mean if you're really pushing them, pushing them they're fairly close, but what I find interesting is the ease, and that's the, the, the operational term here, the ease with which this flex, sorry, this nib flexes to me approaches a vintage flex the best. Uh, it, it opens up fairly easily and yet with no pressure, and even a bit of pressure, you can see you still get a fine line. So it's not, some vintage flex nibs are so soft that if you, even the lightest amount of pressure makes them open up. And that doesn't happen here. Now let's see how we do on this, this vintage test. Still not the same as vintage flex. Doesn't have that snapback yet. I do find this one to be the best in that regard of these three. Um, price of this is about $240 and I think it's rough, but don't quote me on that, I think it's about $140 for the resin model, so the, the non-metal, the plastic version. That pen is very, very light though, which is good for some and not so good for others. So there you have it, a three-way between modern flex nibs. Uh, I hope this was useful. I hope this has answered some of the questions you may have had about the flexibility of these nibs. Uh, let me give you a general conclusion. If you want flex, buy vintage. Vintage 14K flex really is unparalleled. The feeds keep up better, there's less railroading, there is better flex action, softer flex action. That is very pleasant. And yes, you can actually have vintage flex for $20. If you look around a bit on eBay, you don't care much about the looks of a pen, you can definitely have that accessible to you. But today we're talking about modern. Uh, it's a matter of preference. You can go for luxury, uh, you can go for interesting looking nib, uh, you can go for simple, straight performance and good flex. It really depends on what you want. So, I hope this was useful. Uh, a kind thank you to Franklin Christoph for sending me this nib. I appreciate it. I hope this was useful, guys, and uh, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.